In this video, we're gonna be covering off five questions about building websites in five minutes. Question number one, how do I install WordPress? Okay, now there are many different ways that you can do this, but the simplest, easiest way that I have found to do this is by using local by Flywheel. Now Flywheel is a web hosting company. They created some software called Local. It's awesome, it's quite a big file size, but you download that, install it, and then you'll have a local web server. It's super easy to use, and they basically walk you through the steps. Uh, it'll help you install WordPress, and then you can just start your site, and you can just visit that in the browser in a couple of clicks. Question number two, what is a theme, and which one do I need? So WordPress themes have changed over the years. WordPress theme used to really be about like the look, style, and uh, a lot of the functionality sometimes uh, with your website. But the, the overall aesthetics and the functionality have since very much detached from theme to plugins, which is great. So themes do the overall style and then plugins are doing the functionality now, which is awesome. Since the uh, invention of page builders, the, the overall style is actually coming even more further detached from the theme itself. So your theme, you just want it to be super fast, super basic, and, uh, and just help to set up the overall style. I personally like to use Astra uh, or Generate Press or Ocean WP. So any of those I believe have a free version so you can use those, get started, and just have a simple base to build your website from. Question number three, how do I build web pages? So to build web pages with WordPress, right now by default you would have the Gutenberg web page builder installed in WordPress, which is a visual, uh, visual page builder. It helps you create complex layouts that are more than just like the title and some content and an image. It helps you use like multiple columns. So Gutenberg is the built-in page builder in WordPress. Uh, there's also Elementor, Beaver Builder, and lots of other different kinds of page builders that help you create much more visually beautiful and um, complex uh, layouts in WordPress. So you can use one of those page builders. They can just be searched for and installed as a plugin, but you wanna keep it as simple as possible. There are so many templates, so many different ways you can do it, but the key thing is you wanna communicate as clearly as possible the purpose and message that you want on the page. So use a simple page builder, create the content that you need, and just get started because you can edit it at any time. Next question, number four. How do I launch a website? To launch your site, you need to actually have web hosting and a domain name. Now, you, there are lots of different web hosting companies and lots of different domain name providers. So you could just go with one like siteground.com. It's nice and cheap. You can uh, pick up some hosting for around four bucks a month and you can also get a domain name at the same time, which is about 12, $20 a year, something along those lines. Um, so you can pick that up and you wanna get your, your domain and hosting set up first. So you can get that set up, that is actually going to be where your website is stored on the internet. You can have multiple domains all pointing to the same site, so if you don't get 100% the domain that you're after, don't stress too much, uh, get one so you can get your first website live. So you've got your domain and your hosting and then you've got WordPress set up on your domain and hosting. The next thing you need to do is actually move your local WordPress install over onto your live hosting. Now, the way to do that is with a, there's a couple of plugins that help to do this. Um, there is all-in-one WP migration, which I think is an awesome plugin and it pretty much takes care of the whole job. There's the duplicator plugin and there's also Updraft Plus. So these are also backup plugins, but I've found all-in-one WP migration to be an awesome tool to be able to move uh, WordPress sites from one place to another. I think they have a limit on the size of the, um, the install that you can actually migrate. I think it's uh, below something like um, 500 megabytes or something like that. Uh, otherwise, you need to actually unlock the premium version. But it'll pretty much take care of the entire migration process for you, making it super easy. And the fifth question is, how do I make changes to my website once it's live? So now that your website's live, uh, you may be using a page builder such as Elementor or Beaver Builder um, to create the pages and it's super easy to make those changes, which is great. So you can go in, make the changes, press save, publish them and they're live. But what if you wanna do some more complex changes or try different plugins or maybe rearrange some different pages on your website or the menu and you actually wanna get some buy-in from your manager or other team members or you just wanna make sure you're not gonna break the site how do you do that without actually 
pushing it live. So this is where something called a staging server comes in handy. Now again, uh, SiteGround have a one-click staging server capability where you can clone the website and then make those changes and actually push those over to the live website. So it's absolutely fantastic of having a clone of your website so you can make some of those changes. If you're just working by yourself, then you can just go back to using uh, Local by Flywheel to just make those edits locally and then just clone your website back up to the live server and publish those changes. I'd recommend doing edits in this way on a staging server if you have multiple people that need to give input and feedback into a particular um, change that you're gonna make on the website before you need to go live or if you're doing some major changes and you wanna test them out, see how they look, maybe install some different plugins and you don't wanna break anything. So in those situations, I'd recommend using a staging server for just small tweaks and updates and there's no approval process to go through, then you're usually fine to just do that straight on the live site. If you have any tips about how to install, set up and launch WordPress websites, then I would love to know about them in the comments below. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next how-to.